Okay, so what I want to do now, I want to just look at some of these S block elements and we're going to look at three of them here. So we have hydrogen, lithium and sodium. And the reason why they're called S block elements is because if you take an atom, for example, and then you have its outermost electron. So let's say this is its outermost electron and it's in this space here. This outermost electron will be contained within um, what's known as a, a level, okay? Or, and each of these, so each of these, like so this S, for example, this is what's known as an orbital, and this one S is what's known as a sublevel. And then this is all part of, let's say, of the first energy level. But the, basically what it means is it, like it, when you look at the electronic configuration for a particular atom, for any of these elements that are in the S-block, and you, you arrange the electrons the way that they're arranged, and what you'll find is that all of the outermost electrons will be contained within, within an S-orbital, within whichever energy level the last electron is, is within. And that, that's all that means. So we'll have a look at some examples of this. So the first one I want to look at here is hydrogen. So this is hydrogen here. So hydrogen, so we can see that hydrogen, we can just write like this. So hydrogen, its atomic number is one. So that means in its nucleus, it has one proton. So in the nucleus, if you like, imagine this is the nucleus, it has one positive charge. Now the overall charge in an atom is neutral. So therefore it must have one negative charge or one electron. And we can use a symbol like this to represent one electron. So this this is it's kind of like an arrow pointing up and then we can do an arrow pointing down. This here means one electron. It has an upspin and this is another electron with a downspin as well. So if we so we want to try and figure out what is the configuration or what way are the electrons that one electron configured, let's say, within hydrogen. Like, where where does it where does it lie? Now, there's a couple of principles that we have to take into account when we're figuring out where the electrons are, how they're arranged, let's say, in particular elements. So, in this one, we're looking at hydrogen. So, the Albi-Forward principle states that electrons will occupy the lowest energy sublevel available. So, in this case, we only have one. So, what we can see here is that as we move out from the nucleus, further and further away from the nucleus. These energy levels, they contain more and more energy. So as we move up the way, the energy that the electron contains when it's in this level increases. So remember each of these, so for example, you have the energy level n is equal to one. So that's the, the first energy level. Then within that, you have what are known as these sublevels. So this 1s dash, this whole thing here um, is classified as a sub sublevel. Okay, we'll just call it SL sublevel. And then within the sublevel levels, you have individual orbitals. So in this case, we have an S orbital. So there's so the energy level for for this one here is the first energy level. It has one sublevel that's called 1s, and then Within that sublevel, there's an orbital, and it's called a, it's an S orbital. So the orbital is represented by the letter S, and the dash here indicates that there's one S orbital. So this whole thing is a is a sublevel of the first energy level, and um, and it has it has an S orbital, and it has one S orbital, and the dash indicates that it's one S orbital. And if you remember, the orbitals then have individual, they have specific shapes, for example. So a, a way to kind of think about an orbital is like a region in space in which an electron can hang out. So a way to think about the orbitals then are they have a particular shape. For example, this one here is what's known as an S. This one here. Okay, not working out. So this one here is what's called an S orbital. This is the shape. So it's just basically a sphere. This shape here is called a P orbital. And then these ones here, 
there's one, two, three, four, five, there's five. These are called D orbitals. And this is the kind of shape that they take up like so. So if we have a look here, so this S orbital here, in the first energy level in this sub, in this uh, sub level called 1s, has an s orbital, which is which would be this shape here, and it contains. Now, if we think about not uh, no more than two electrons can occupy an orbital at any one time, so each of these dashes represents an orbital, and each of these dashes can each of these orbitals can only contain two electrons. And electrons tend to occupy orbitals of equal energy singly where possible. So what does that mean? So imagine if, let's say, this energy level was full and this energy level was full, and you have, let's say, four electrons, or you have three more electrons arranged. Those three electrons will occupy the orbital singly, like so, one, two, three. That's the way that they'll, they'll occupy the orbitals. They won't, let's say, do something like this. They won't go one, two, and then three like that. They won't leave. They'll try and fill up all of the energy levels at, with at least one electron because that arrangement is more stable. So back then to, so let's say if we want to look at the electronic configuration of hydrogen, hydrogen has one proton in the nucleus. It has one electron. So its electronic configuration will be, it'll just have one electron in this outer shell, in this sub-level. 1s. And what does that look like if I wanted to write out the electronic configuration for um, hydrogen? It would look, so we put a 1 to indicate that it's the first energy level. Uh, we put an s to indicate that it's this 1s orbital that's here. And then we put a superscript 1, which indicates that there's just one electron within this orbital. So this orbital could actually take two electrons, but in the case of just if we take elemental hydrogen from the periodic table, this is the way it's arranged like so. And this is what it looks like. So this here would be how you would write down the electronic structure for hydrogen. And as we can see, it's an S block element because the outermost electron, and in this case, hydrogen just has one electron, is contained within an S orbital. So it's contained within. So therefore, that's why it, that's why it's part of the S block. So what we can do now is we can look at this one here. So this is lithium, and again we can see lithium is is in this first group. It's also an S block element, and we we'll, we we'll look at the electronic configuration for lithium. So the atomic number for lithium is three. So what that means is that lithium has three protons in its nucleus. So we can say that it has three protons, so three positive charges. So one, two, three. It also then is going to have a three negative or three electrons. So it has, let's say, three electrons. So we want to try and figure out what way are these electrons arranged, let's say, and what's its configuration. So what's going to happen is, so as per this principle, so the lowest energy sublevel available will be filled up first. So this is the 1s energy sublevel. And each level can contain two electrons. So in this case, you're going to get two, two of them, two of the three. So imagine we have one, two, three. So two of the three are going to be within this first energy level. And then the next one, only then when only when this energy level is full up do electrons start to distribute in the higher energy levels. So what will happen is you're going to have the remaining one electron. It'll occupy this sublevel, which is within the second energy level, the S, the 2S sublevel. It won't go into the 2P sublevel. It'll go into this lower energy level. So it'll, it'll stay in here. So it'll go in here first. So we can see now that we have the three electrons, they're arranged in their energy levels within the sub energy levels and within the individual specific, specific orbitals. So, so this is the way they're arranged. So we can look at it like this in the graph. Now we can see here that the two electrons that are within this energy level, they have a certain amount of energy associated with them. 
which is representative, let's say, so their energy level is in around here. Whereas if we take this one electron up here, it's in a higher energy level. It's in the second energy level. So it is going to have a higher energy associated with it in comparison to these two electrons down here. The two electrons that are within the same orbital will have the same energy values, as you can see here. So this is the way, this is what it would look like. And then if we want to write this out, how do we do this? So again, we're just going to write, so we have a one, which represents the first energy level. We'll have an S, which represents this S orbital. And then we'll have a superscript two, which indicates that two of these electrons, two of the three electrons of lithium are contained within an S orbital. And then we, we represent the next, so it's going to be two, which is the second energy level, S, which is the S orbital. And then we have just one electron in here, the, the remaining electron. So this is what, this is the elect electronic configuration, let's say for lithium, if you were to write it out, this is what it looks like. Um, again, we can see that the outermost electron, which is this one here, it's contained within an S orbital, just like hydrogen. And therefore it's why these two elements belong within the S block. And then if we want to move on then to sodium, so we have sodium here. So sodium has, let's just do this in a different color. So sodium, so sodium, it ha, so you, we can see it, it has 11 protons. So it's gonna have 11 positive charges. So one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. So it has 11 positive charges in its nucleus. The overall atom is neutral, so therefore it must have 11 electrons outside here within the orbitals. What we want to do now is we want to arrange these electrons following these principles here. So the first energy level is going to take two of those 11 electrons. So the, remember, the lowest energy levels will be filled first as per this principle. So you're going to get two, two of the 11 here. So that leaves us with nine. So what's going to happen then is this second energy level, this second um, suborbital, or the second sub energy level, should I say, 2s, it's going to take up two more. So two of them will go in here. So that's four of the nine. So we have five. So then what's going to happen then is, first of all, this, the remaining five electrons, so this can contain six electrons. So what will actually start to happen is, um, electrons will occupy orbital, uh, orbitals of equal energy singly where possible. So what's going to happen is, first of all, it'll fill up like this. So you'll have one, two, three. So it'll occupy the energy level singly. And then once each energy level has an electron, then the remaining, so, so we have five remaining. So, so, sorry, we have five that can go in, that have to go into this energy level. So three of them will arrange themselves like this singly in each of the, the P orbitals. Okay, and that's, and that's, that's in line with this principle here. And each orbital can only have two electrons. So therefore what will happen is the remaining, so you're going to get another one will fit in here, another one will fit in here, and then that accounts for all of the electrons that, um, that sodium contains. So this is sodium. So as we can see now, so we have the 11 electrons and this is the way that they're arranged like so. So what we can do is we can do the same kind of print, we can write out the electronic configuration for sodium. So we again we'd have one s two that that represents this sub level here and the two electrons within it. That's what the, the superscript two is for. Then we have the second energy. The sec the so then it's two 
S2 that represents these guys here. And then we have 2P and we have 2, 4, and 5. So it's going to be 2P5. Actually, so we actually have another electron in here. So that's so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we have one electron up here, like so. So again, we're gonna have two s two two s two, then we have two two p six, because you have the six electrons in here, and then you have three s. 3s1 like so so again this is the electronic configuration for sodium this is what it looks like when you write it out so so again what we can see is that the outermost electron is contained within this 3s sub energy level here so and that's the way it's written here so again that is why um, sodium for example is contained let's say within this s block within these groups and what we can see is that if we look at each of these so this is one electron in the s block in the s energy level this is one electron in the energy level the outermost energy level and this one has one electron in the outermost energy level as well so we can see that that's why they all belong to the S block, but also as well, they're, they're gonna have similar chemical properties to each other as well, because of this one electron in the outermost shell. So remember then as well, not only do, so we have like this, each dash here represents an orbital. So in this case, it's an S orbital, and this is the shape of the S orbital. So this one electron in hydrogen, it kind of hangs out in a, in this in a 3d space that looks like this if we take these guys here these two electrons hang out in a 3d space that's like this an s orbital and this one electron up here hangs out in a space that's like this as well now if we were to look at look at these guys here so again this is like a this this if we take these shapes and bring them over here So if we take these two electrons here in this s orbital, they hang out in the space that's like this. And um, if we take these two here, they hang out in the space that's like this. Now, if we take these two p, these like six electrons here, each of these dashes here that contains the two electrons is a, it contains the electrons in a space that looks like this. So each that dash represents what's known as a as a p a p so this is an s orbital and this is a p orbital so one electron will be let's say within here and one electron will be in, within here and there's three p orbitals there's one that goes across like this which is the x-axis there's one that goes up down like this which is the z-axis and then there's one that goes like this which is the y-axis and they're all at night they'll all be at 90 degree angles to each other So if we see here, so we have two, so we have three of these p sublevels. So one here, one here, and one here. Each dash with two electrons in it looks like this. It's this kind of a shape. And then this one here will kind of it'll be the same dumbbell shape, but just across this way. And these two here, it'll be the same dumbbell shape, just across this way as well. And then this next energy level up will be the electron will be contained within a space like this. And these spaces are kind of like, they're, a way to kind of think about them is they're like, it's a region of space where there's a high probability of finding this particular energy, this particular electron that has this particular energy value associated with it. And then the d orbitals, so you have, when you have these d sub, these d orbitals, um, you have one, two, three, four, there's, there's normally five of them together. And each orbital can contain two. So this whole sub energy level 3D, for example, it can contain up to 10 electrons. And they're going to be arranged in spaces that look like this. 
So hopefully that makes sense. So that is the, so that's just examples of some of just three elements that belong into the in the S group and just looking at their electronic configurations and the way that you map out and look at the way that you represent the electronic configurations, which is like this. And that's just for three of those elements. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense.